What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with limits. So this is another example where we're gonna to have to draw a graph given a bunch of characteristics. So there are 10 characteristics. Notice it's a mix of different kinds. So we have like domain, range, we have a bunch of limits, we have some points. And so we're gonna to have to combine all of these and draw a function. So what I'm gonna do, I'll draw the function over here. So let's draw a graph. And let's try to draw something that's gonna fit all of these. Now, as I mentioned in previous similar examples, what I like to personally start with is any points that are given. Because sometimes limits, the way they look, there's a little bit of flexibility that can be used, but with certain points, if points are given coordinates, there's no flexibility with that. Those are set things on the graph. So notice that we're given two points out of all of these 10 characteristics in number five and number seven. So notice we're told f of negative two is equal to three. So that's the same as a point negative two and three. So let's say negative two is like over here. Let's say we got a y value of three over here. So the point is going to be right there. So that is characteristic five. So we're done that. And then we have f of one is equal to negative three. So that's another point at one and negative three. So we'll have one, then we'll have negative three. So that's gonna be right there, right? So we end up having that point. Right, so those are the only points that are given. The rest are limits or domain and range. So from here, it's really up to you what you wanna do. You can even pause the video and try this yourself and see what kind of graph you come up with and then you can compare it to the one that I'm gonna get. Personally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with limits eight and nine because notice that that is a vertical asymptote there. And so there's not, much flexibility in terms of how that's going to look. Vertical asymptotes pretty much all look the same. And the way we know is because the function, as x approaches two from the negative side, the function is approaching positive infinity. The y values are going towards positive infinity. And then as x approaches two from the positive side, the function or the y values of the function are going towards negative infinity. So from both sides, as we approach two, the function is going to positive or negative infinity, which is a characteristic of a vertical asymptote. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote for sure at an x value of two. As we approach two from the negative side, the y values are going towards positive infinity. As we approach two from the um, positive side, the y values are going towards negative infinity. So that's going to be like down here, like that, right? And then also notice that that vertical asymptote takes care of this domain here, because notice we're told that the domain is x er, but x cannot equal 2. And so that represents that break in the domain right there, which is going to be the vertical asymptote. So that right there ends up getting taken care of. And then notice that over here, we're told the limit as x approaches infinity, then f of x is going to approach zero, or it's going towards zero. And whenever x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity, that represents a horizontal asymptote. So as x goes towards positive infinity, right, so as the x values get very large, the function is going towards a y value of zero. And so if we draw that on the graph, that could be maybe something like this, right? That function is approaching that y value of zero. And there's different ways that this could look. This can maybe even cross the um, x-axis and then come back down and then maybe approach that y value of zero from the top. But I just feel like this here is an easier way to draw. And I was comfortable drawing that right away because notice that nowhere in these characteristics are we told anything about x values greater than two, 
right? Like notice these limits that we're dealing with, x is approaching negative two, which is gonna be over here, negative two, positive one, right? There's nothing we have to worry about for any x values that are greater than two. And so really we got a lot of flexibility in terms of how the graph is going to look towards the, or on the right side of that vertical asymptote. Now, maybe if we had like a limit up here or something, then we'd have to bring the graph and then bring it down, but we weren't given anything like that, right? So we could just leave the graph like this. But now, working with these other characteristics, we gotta be careful because we're getting into fairly detailed stuff here. So notice here we're told the limit as x approaches one, of the function, the function is gonna approach one, the y values are gonna approach one. So what does that mean? Well, notice that at an x value of one, we already have a point over here, right? This is one and negative three. But notice that we're told the limit as x approaches one of the function is equal to one. And so if you really think about it, what that means is that this point has to be by itself and the function approaches uh, a y value of one as x approaches one, meaning that there's gonna be a hole there. So let me actually just link up these two right here for now. And then what's happening is, um, is you have the function go like that somewhere. So we'll figure out how it's gonna to look to the left here, but I kinda of just wanna talk about this portion in terms of why this is a hole, and then this is a point here. So if you remember from previous videos, if we've had functions approach a certain point that's a hole, and then we have a coordinate at that same x value, defined for a different y value. So let's say this hole is at like, let's use these uh, same y values. So notice that this hole is happening at a y value of one, and then this coordinate's happening at a y value of negative three, and both of them have an x value of one. When we approach the limit, right? As we approach, what's the limit going to be? It's going to be the y value of the whole, right? Because it doesn't necessarily have to be defined there as we've shown in previous videos, right? It just has to approach a certain value, okay? But it can't be defined at that value here because we're dealing with a function. So you can't have two y values for the same x value. And since the y value for sure is defined there already, we know that this has to be a whole then, right? In order for that limit to exist and in order for that point to exist, right? You can't have two points, uh, two y values for the same x value because you're dealing with a function. It has to pass that vertical line test, right? Hopefully you get that explanation. You may have to rewatch that a couple of times, but that's definitely one of the trickier parts of this graph here is recognizing you got a point there, but then the limit is approaching a different y value, which implies that there is a hole there. All right, so that's that. So we dealt with that characteristic. And now let's be careful here. Notice as x approaches negative two from the positive side, the function is approaching zero. And then as x approaches negative two from the negative side, the function is approaching positive two, but notice that at negative two, again, we have a defined point. And so notice that it's approaching different y values from both sides. But because we already have a y value defined at negative two, it means that it's going to be approaching holes from both sides. So notice that negative two and positive two. So let's say that's like positive two is like over here, so there's gonna be a hole. And then we got this y value of zero, so there's actually gonna be a hole there as well. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're approaching this y value of zero 
as x approaches negative 2 from the positive side. So as we approach this negative 2 from the positive side, it's approaching this hole. So it looks something, let's say, like that. Um, and then, give me a sec here. Yeah, and then what's happening is as the function approaches negative 2 from the negative side, it's approaching this y value. And I'm just going to put this here. I'll figure out the shape after. But I just want to talk about what's happening here. So notice these have to be holes because at negative 2, again, it's what we talked about before. We already have a defined y value. We can't have multiple defined y values for that same x value. So these definitely have to be holes. Notice they're one-sided limits. So as we're approaching negative 2, from the positive side, the function is approaching a y value of zero, which is just the x-axis. And then as we approach negative two, from the negative side, the y value is approaching positive two, right there. And then we also have a point that's defined, meaning these have to be holes because you can't have multiple defined points. All right, so notice that the this point this hole, this hole here, and how the function is matching up there, it takes care of this characteristic and then that characteristic right there. And then also, no, sorry, this characteristic here where we have that point defined at negative two and three, right? So you gotta be careful. This is a pretty intricate graph. There's lots to take in. You gotta be super aware of all the steps and how potential steps affect other characteristics. Okay, now the domain, uh, we have that figured out, right? Basically, it's gonna be XER, so we know this portion of the graph, it's gonna have to keep going towards negative infinity, and then there's a break at two, so we're all good there. And then all we have to make sure is that all of the Y values are being, um, taken care of, right? That the function is hitting all of the y values from positive infinity to negative infinity. So this is kind of a tougher step as well. So notice that this portion of the graph, it's nice because it's hitting all of the y values from negative infinity to zero, but not including zero, right? It's approaching zero. And then also notice that we have a hole here right? So the function so far from what we have drawn, the y value of zero is not defined on this function. So we know that this portion of the graph, it's definitely going to have to come down to the x-axis. This is another fairly tricky part of this graph, right? Because you may, some students may just like, okay, I'll just draw something like that but then this wouldn't be fully correct. You'd get some marks, right? You'd get most of the marks prob uh, probably, but you wouldn't get full marks because this graph over here, notice that it has to have a range where all of the y values, where the function is hitting all the y values from negative infinity to positive infinity, this graph right here, it would be missing that y value of zero, right? So it's missing a y value of zero, and it's also right now missing a y value of one, right? Notice how if we drew like a dotted line, a horizontal line at this y value of one, there's a hole over here, and then there's no other y value of one that's being taken care of. So what has to happen is this, we have to definitely make sure this comes down right? And so notice that there we'll have that y value of 1 being taken care of. And then it also has to go through the, um, the x-axis in order to get that y value of 0. And it could bounce off the axis. doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to go lower than that because the y values are taken care of. The negative y values are taken care of with this portion, but it could also go through. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, we could just make this go back up. 
like that. Right, and we didn't even have to make it go back up. We could have also just made it keep going down. So that's another thing that could potentially happen. You could just have this function keep going down like that because the y values at two, it's there, it's defined on this portion of the graph and all the y values to positive infinity are defined with this portion of the graph. Right, so you got some flexibility with what to do there, but this portion definitely has to go through this y value of one to make it defined and through this y value of zero to make it defined. So I'm just gonna keep it like this, right? But again, there's more flexibility with what you can do there. Anyway, lots of explanations. That was a lot to take in. Hopefully you followed along, tried my best to explain. It's kind of tricky to explain this stuff sometimes, especially when you're dealing with so many characteristics, but this was a pretty tough graph to draw just because of all of the different details. You gotta be super conscious, super aware when you are dealing with these to make sure that everything, all of the characteristics are 